Hello. Hello. What's going on? Hey, yes. Yeah. How's it going, man? Doing all right. Sorry it uh, took me a minute there. <laughs> I, what I didn't think you were coming back. <laughs> no, well the, well, the problem is, is I have like one day off a week, so I'll go to the supermarket, get yeah. all, get all the stuff that's you know ripe right now, and it's all marked down. So then I just buy it, cut it up, freeze it all. It looks like I'm prepping for war. I'm, I'm stopped. Right. If, if Armageddon comes, I'll be all right on the food end for a little bit. Pro yeah, you might have to teach me that actually later on. That's yeah, not a bad idea. you just gotta find where in the supermarket they put all the markdown stuff, buy it and freeze it. It's it's super cheap about eating healthy. There's ways it can be done. So, what stood out in the news for you this week? Anything? Um, well, I just had a. I, I always I should remember this guy's Twitter handle. It's like Widget It or something like that. But he's he's great. He sends me news all the time, and he just sent me the Milwaukee footage. And oh my God, it, have you seen it yet? Uh, all I saw. Let me get this right. All I know about it was some black guy had a stolen gun. He got shot. Yeah. So now black people they're shouting kill whitey, is that right? Oh yeah, they're and they're, like, they're stealing hair extensions. I steal <laughs> stealing hair extensions and yeah I Because of justice, yeah that yeah. stealing that should be the headline, they're stealing hair <laughs> hair extensions. extensions for justice. Yeah, yeah, and I even saw a thing where a journalist had to leave because they were getting attacked just for being white and being around. Like, I posted something, and I'm sure people will think it's kind of insensitive, but in my eyes, and, you know, this may be one of the rare instances where I'm seeing this as a white person, so I have this feeling. I, it, it I, did, I, I didn't see much, but it worried me quite a lot that this is like a bit of a build-up now. Well, yeah, yeah, that's the, it's definitely, it's building and it's accelerating. It's getting worse and worse each time. And, and the instances, as we can see, it could be something that really doesn't need any explanation or any of this backlash. But these guys are worse than the KKK. Like, the KKK had an agenda. They had a certain group they targeted. There was a, you know, it's, it's fucked up and as warped as that is, but these guys just want chaos. Like, I mean, it's like the purge. I saw a picture of a, yeah, of a, yeah. of a black chick in a Halloween mask with a huge-ass gun. It's the purge. It's it's so unbelievable, and I just I saw a petrol station on fire as well. Yeah, it's gas dramatic. stations on fire, and the shame about it is, is it's you know the whole town has been run by Democrats for years, and it's a black community imploding basically, of and in the name of you know justice for black communities, like how it makes any sense, is really beyond me. But um. I don't know if you've seen, there was a documentary that was sent to me this week that I should make sure you watch. It's called Anarchy USA, and it's by yeah. G. Edward Griffin, who, you know, he does a lot of health talks and stuff about uh, the creation of money. But this was in 1964 or 66, and it was all about the civil rights movement and how they had all of these communi communist and socialist infiltrators and double agents and the whole thing has been ran by communists and socialists. And I told people this when Black Lives Matter first started. I said, this group is going to be used to sell socialism and communism to black people in the name of equality. And sure enough, my intuition about it was factually correct from the 60s. When I posted it, another friend of mine sent me a quote from 1912 about communism and socialism using black Americans basically as cannon fodder to set up communism and socialism in the West. Well, the trend in the video at the moment, which I think Paul Joseph Watson went with, and then uh, Drudge Report linked up to it on a conservative web page, and it had that bulletin from the news, and I asked that black kid why he was rioting, he may have seen that, and he's like, well, man, there's like rich people, and the rich people need to give us poor folk some of that rich money. Did you see that clip? That's been like, you go on Drudge, I think that's like the red link in the middle. I haven't, but it doesn't surprise me because, you know... Yeah, it's on Paul Joseph Watson's Twitter. It's got like, you know, Fox News like on the scene. They go out to strike to a black kid, and that's what he says. It's like, well, rich people have got rich money, and they, they need to start giving that money to us poor folk, us and, poor black folk. And you know, it's a, it's a shame because 
there's there's two aspects. Well, that to matches this. exactly what you're saying. Doesn't yeah, it? yeah, it, it does. It's not about it, it's injustice. class envy. It's not about yeah. Yeah, it's not about race. It's it's class envy that parades around as everything else. Like Gavin McInnes did a really good video where he talked about social justice warriors being the new Victorians. How it's like you know they develop their own language and microaggressions and you know you see it when they'll talk about Trump and be like you know he's on reality TV right it's a very sort of snobbish and that's where these these you know communist socialist blacks tie in with the white class who wants to be part of this snobby Victorian-esque social justice warrior it's it's class envy through and through it's woven through it but it parades around as racist sexist homophobic but it is it's about the rich and the poor and i've realized these people have no concept of wealth creation they'll say they hate capitalism but they have no idea what it is i mean i was like that because i'll ask them i'll say oh so you hate like lemonade stands and farmers yeah markets? Any, any issue they have with capitalism is actually an issue they have with government yeah yeah and they don't realize that There's... yeah i used to make that mistake yeah, I, so did I at some points. I mean, but it's... it's there's so it, it also works when people go, well, mankind are just bad. They need to be wiped out. It's like, as a whole, men aren't... Like, mankind isn't bad. You might see the odd madman. You might see the odd, you know, completely psychotic guy killing people. But as a whole, death comes via government. Yeah. It, if you look at all the bad atrocities they name, it's like, that wasn't really man. That was like a government. That was power. When power becomes such a great great huge unstoppable force it needs to be turned into mega death well it also reminds me how Dinesh D'Souza makes this point about how in the past hundred years the Democratic Party has done a excellent job at blaming all of their past mistakes on America like as if they you know because they've been in power so they represent America I guess at this rate but you know with slavery they say oh well it was the South they don't say it was Southern Democrats with Jim Crow. Oh, it was America voted for it. It wasn't the Democrats voted for it. They continually, you know, it's not, oh, well, yeah, there were a handful of racist white people who were in the KKK. No, it's white people in general. Well, black people can't be racist, can they? That's what MTV told me. Yeah, yeah, they can't be racist. And I've even heard people, you know, deny the idea of there can't be a black supremacist. And it's like, how can, I mean, that's where I started. Well, a big thing at the young age group was when I was debating Islam, they were saying, well, first of all, Islam was a race, but if I ignored that, that basically race is a social construct. Like, that's really being pushed now, that yeah. race is a social construct. It's not biological. It's not genetic. And, but it's also so amazing. People actually believe it, though. I know, I know. And it's amazing, though, how it's like they adopt this theory that everything's a social construct, and then they also want to use it against people like it is then a concrete reality, which so almost negates the idea that it's like, okay, well, if it's a social construct, then we're all just agreeing to it. So why don't we stop agreeing to it? Like, that's what I tell people, you know, the Morgan Freeman approach. You stop calling me a black man, call me Morgan Freeman, I'll stop calling you See, a white yeah, guy. Yeah, that's where you're going there, wrong, Jamie. It's there goes wrong, racism. Mate. No, you're going wrong now. I guess. Yeah, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what you need to do what I'm doing. I'm going to self-identify as a disabled, black, transgender, lesbian, vampire, heli attack helicopter. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure you'll be qualified for can you, uh, lo lots why of are you affirmative. I think, can you not respect my decision? I, I guess I do. I was just about your bigotry. <laughs> I was just gonna say though, you seriously, uh, can you stop laughing? Like I, yeah, yeah. self-identifying. I think you should respect. Please don't get my... me, don't get me removed from the internet, please. <laughs> um, you know, one thing. Well, you, you could be. Tr why not be trans dead? <laughs> trans living is that possible? You already are trans, I don't know. Maybe. Trans dead, just pretend you're dead. Like a zombie. You've seen the trans abled where they cut off their body limbs. And the woman who poured like bleach in her eyes or something to yeah. become blind, yeah. Um, when you mentioned Islamophobia, it reminded me of something. <gasps> Have you seen, uh, I did a video with... We're gonna get letters. With, uh, what'd you say, we're gonna get letters? Yeah. Um, 
with uh, Will Smith being like, oh, I'm in Dubai, I'm having a great time, it's all Yeah, good. did the transgender not make it through yeah, yeah. the airport? Yeah, she didn't make it through the airport because she was arrested for impersonating a man. And then... Uh, Which is, that's illegal, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, is that illegal out there? Well, yeah, they basically said, you know, we're taking your passport, you can't come in, because if she came in, she could be arrested or killed. Well, right. they actually didn't let her I in. I mean, they technically did her a favor. Yeah, they didn't let her into the country. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But um, I also, when I was looking into it, I saw two prior articles, one of a British woman, one of a Norwegian woman. Both went to vacation there, got raped, and then when they... Uh, well, what about Will Smith's kid? Reported How did he get it? On? I, you know, I'll tell you what, they probably... He probably had to leave his skirt-wearing ass at home. Because they would have been like, they won't, they'll they think you're a man impersonating a woman. Like, you're right. It's it's so... These people, soulless. Yeah, he was on the, his wife was on the front page of the Metro recently. Well, not recently, it was a couple of months ago. And when it had it, it was like, the Metro's really aimed at women now, these newspapers. And it, they really attack men. And what it was, was how I have an open relationship with Will Smith. And encouraging women that they shouldn't, it's boring to have a husband. Well, and it, well, because the thing is, is Will Smith is gay. I mean, I don't, I, if you have one rumor here or there when you first start out, that's one thing. When you're an established celebrity with like 15, 20 years worth of rumors, can I throw one out there? You're gay. Um, can I throw another one out there? Yeah, sure. Tupac is really, really camp guy. He's really feminine. Uh huh. Like over the top feminine. Yeah. But did you see the early days videos of him before he was famous? Yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, she's got so much respect for Benin. It's like, oh, it's like her candy. It's got like all his pastel colours and baseball cap on. It's like, oh, I just love women. My, my love is just done. Well, and he seems to be camp to me. He seems to be like really gay. Most of the uh, hip hop artists that you Snoop see Dogg nowadays. Snoop Dogg comes across as a little bit camp to me. Yeah, I could see that with Snoop. Um, Doc... I mean, am I the only one seeing it? No, no. It, there's lots of conspiracies if you look into it. A lot of it, though, doesn't go back that far. It kind of picked up around Lil Wayne. Because Lil Wayne, you know, started wearing the skin-tight pants. There were pictures of him kissing his manager. Then he, uh... There was all sorts of weird things where someone signed by his label was like, yeah, I let the manager fuck me in the ass to get a deal. So what? Like, and they're all talking about sucking each other's dicks and... It's crazy, and the thing well, is though... Well, it might be a good way to control them, because if they've got, if they have got that stuff as evidence... Well, you know what the other thing too, and this, this I think also plays into it. I had seen rumors when I was looking into all this, because you know, they think Justin Timberlake might be... Um, every, everyone in Hollywood, there's a rumor at least. But one of the points I thought was interesting is I found a thing about Elvis. Elvis had a guy that traveled with him a lot, and they think he was sleeping with him, and he used to get very worried when he was doing movies that he would seem to have this sort of flamboyant, limp wrist, you know, flailing type thing, being too effeminate. So he was very, very, like, particular about monitoring for that. He didn't want anyone to perceive him as gay, because he probably was. But part of his reason for that was he was terrified of random women trying to get pregnant by him. Because you didn't have birth control like you do nowadays back then. So I understand if you're at a very top of the world male celebrity level to not sleep with random women because you're, you're too afraid they're going to try to have random babies with you. Like I've seen videos, it's funny, I saw a video of a Brazilian girl Justin Bieber sleeps with and it it looked like a tranny and I've also heard rumors that Bieber is a tranny so makes sense why you don't have well, little going, random Bieber like, babies running around not to digress too much I wanted to go back to the Black Lives Matter protest yeah yeah one thing I did see was um I don't know what kicked it off but that poor black kid I mean I don't like Black Lives Matter but no one wants to see he got run over like big time hit yeah. by a car and then the first thing the black women did was shout, where are the cops? Yeah, I know. It's... But hang on a minute, I didn't think they wanted any police presence or the police were racist. They just... And then as soon as it kicks off and they hear gunshots up being fired, they're like, get the cops, get the cops, where are the cops? So well, like, hang on a minute. Well, the whole protest was that blacks are violent towards you. 
Well, the problem is, is that, and, and I feel like the people within the Black Lives Matter movement, they, the problem is, is they just aren't capable of verbalizing the actual problem. They, I, I think what it is, is they don't like feeling as if, you know, black people are a hassle just for the sake of revenue gener generation. They, they want them there to enforce crimes with victims, obviously. If a baby gets kidnapped or someone gets hit by a car, yeah, they want police there. But they don't want police just pulling people over and writing them tickets and, you know, things like that. For whatever reason, they can't verbalize this. Like, I had a conversation yesterday where I tried to explain, you know, under the Constitution, you have free and unrestricted travel, drug crimes and gun crimes target blacks, you needed a amendment for prohibition. Like, the Constitution is the answer for all of this. And the woman's response was, well, the Constitution was written by people that own slaves, so they don't give a fuck about anyone. And it's like, that has nothing to do with what I'm saying. In a court of law, the, the personal lives of the people who wrote the law are irrelevant. But they have black people where they have these sort of mental blocks where if you bring something up that is outside of the white versus black narrative, they will shut it down. They don't want to hear it. And it's, the it's other thing, really troublesome. The other big story that there wasn't too much I was following was the Hillary Clinton rally she did. Uh, and which it one? had Omar Martin. Oh my back, God! Like, on, her, on her left shoulder. You know, and you. For which side is Satan on? Is he on your left shoulder or your right one? When you throw the salt. Left on your shoulder. Left hand. Was he over Hillary's left shoulder? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and they don't know how he got there. They don't vet those people who are going to be on camera around the whole world. Well, no, going. they pick them out. They, they always, yeah, they no always shit want to make sure it's like a diverse group and everything like that. Because yeah, of, you, you know, need women in there, black people and a few Muslims. But, but now, let's, let's think of it like this. I doubt ISIS is paying attention to Hillary Clinton's press reports. Can you just think about the optics on this, where it's like... You have ISIS, and they can hold up a picture now of Hillary Clinton and Omar Mateen's father standing right behind her, supporting her. I mean, how does that look? Fuck what was being said. Fuck their excuse. It looks like support. a signal, doesn't it, in a way? It's like a yeah. sci-fi movie, but that's a signal to the sleep cells. Yeah, like, we're, we're, this and is our candidate. She's on our side. We've infiltrated, She, she yeah. stands with us, basically. You know, they have eyes standing with like Hillary. She is that stands what they call with them. Dummies? Uh, maybe I don't know, but it's it's really bothersome, and very few people are looking at it from that angle. Where it's, it's like, like a cartoon, because some reporters yeah. caught up them later, and it's like, do you think it's disrespectful you being here? It's like, why, why? I do not see a problem. Why, my son? I do not see. I'm very upset. Well, we never actually apologized for it. And here's here's the other thing that I thought was very interesting. When they interviewed him, they were like, you know, why are you here? Because everyone seems so forgotten. He lives in New York. So why did he drive down to Florida? I mean, that's why it's disrespectful. It's not like he showed up at a Hillary rally in well, his hometown. Well, Hillary was actually doing a speech about Orlando that night. Was he? Oh my he, god. Yeah, Hillary's speech was like, oh, there's such a loss. Yeah, oh, yeah, there. yeah. And then she blamed the Second Amendment, which is kind of like, well, blaming Americans. Yeah. When it wasn't really Americans, it was Islam that did it. And yep. the guy's dad is sat behind you on your left shoulder. And when he goes, well, you know, my son, don't know where he got those ideas from. It's like, mm, maybe your YouTube channel? Yeah. And then, uh... Maybe your radio station you've got where you say it's okay to throw gays of roofs and you sworn alliance to the Taliban. That's on your YouTube channel. And it's, it's just so crazy, like... And then he had photos of him before in the White House outside State Department's door. Yeah. Do you remember that one? Like, as soon as the shit happened, all the photos came out of his dad at the State, State Department in the White House. Yeah, Clock Boy 2, who's back in the headlines. I'll tell you, I, did you see his press conference? I saw bits of it. He was like, I have to leave the house covered for my safety. I mean, he's acting like he's Michael Jackson walking around in a beekeeper outfit. And it's like, I looked into this. Muslims are 2% of hate crimes. You have a very low percentage of being attacked as a Muslim for being Muslim. 
But, you know, just playing it up, being like, oh, I was so traumatized. And it's like, oh, really? You got to fly around, meet with some international war criminals, Obama, Google, and all this other shit. And now you want, like, $50 million from the school district to fund your dad's terrorist campaigns? What the fuck? His own laughing, it just rattles me because... The other thing is, do you remember how dodgy the whole Orlando shooting was in the first place? With all, like, the cr there were crisis actors. I'm not saying it didn't happen. They were definitely used in crisis actors. I, I don't buy it. I mean, I think we talked about this before. Three hours in there with a hostage situation, and I didn't see cell phone footage. Like, how, do you, yeah, well, how does that happen? Some of the actors were, like, connected to a drip, and the drip was connected to nothing, had no bag in there. And they do the press conference these people that don't look like doctors at 9-11. The time of the clock is actually 9-11. And then he says he took three shots at point blank, one in the leg, one in the arm, and one just in the waist. And he looks fine. He's just out the next day talking to press. Yeah. Just looks completely comfortable. It's like if you've been shot three times point blank. Like they all just seem to be on cue. None of them looked really distressed or in any kind of pain or even any discomfort. Even my mum was saying that. My mum's never watched any alternative news ever. She's never watched Alex Jones. And she was calling me saying, these are crisis actors. Yeah. Like, they're not the real people. This, she, even she was like, this story just doesn't make any sense. And then Omar, the actual shooter, he ended up being in two movies. Did you see that? He's in two films. No. Yeah, he's in one film, which is a, a comedy. And it's filmed in Afghanistan. It's a gay comedy, and he plays a gay guy in it. And then the other film was about um, going undercover about an oil spillage and how bad they were covering it up. Mm -hmm. And then they interview Omar undercover, because Omar's a security guard for G4S at the time, protecting where the oil spillage is. So the car just drives up, and it's like undercover filming. But there's four different cameras, and all the cameras pan perfectly. It's all in perfect focus. Yeah. And then Omar just walks up and just, out of the blue, volunteers. Oh, it's a cover-up. Oh, we're just here for money. Like, they're not really tidying this up. The more of a mess they make, the longer we're employed. Just volunteering all this information again. Wow, bombshell, whistleblower. And it's like, no, that looked like a complete setup. Yeah. There's no way that happened. Like you had always four cameras just run. Like some of them are outside of the car, like filming yeah. from outside the car. I'll tell you what. the thing. But you saying you know the the first movie where he plays a gay guy and everything because you know what that yeah. immediately makes me think of the fact that they were saying that he was like staking out the plays that he was seen there over and over. So it's like okay, if he had played a role where he was a gay character, he could just assume that role and go into the club, basically. Like, it's it's so, oh my god, it's because, you know, you think about it, well, it's like... it gets even fucking weirder, mate. It just compounds, I've got, like... I've got to get this right, because sometimes I confuse it. Now, I think their Imran shared the same bodyguard with the blind shake. And the blind shake is the shake that looks like Far for Christmas. Like if yeah. Far for Christmas was a shake, it would look like that. And then he was related to the um, hook guy in London. Do you know the hate preach in London? The Islamic hate preach with the hook hand? Yeah. And they come out of a mosque called Frinsbury Park. Now if you look at Frinsbury Park, just do your own Google search, Every terrorist comes out of Frinsbury Park. Like the guys that did the Amsterdam train, where the Americans had to take him out. Charlie Hebdo, they came from Frinsbury Park. Seven Seven, they came from Frinsbury Park. The Paris attackers had links to, you know, the Frinsbury Park. Every single terrorist has had a link to Frinsbury Park. So it's amazing how... I mean, Frinsbury Park, is it safe to say it's MI5? Yeah. It's an MI5 recruiting center. I mean, just type in yourself, have a look. Any, just type in any Islamic attack in Frinsbury Park. You can always link it back. And it's, it's amazing to me how you've got that chain. And then that chain doesn't just go to the White House. You've got Omar's dad outside the office of the White House. Now, when I checked, the White House actually made a statement about it. They said that the photo was real, but they couldn't confirm why he was there. 
It's like we can't just walk into the White House and take your photo outside of the State Department. You kind of need an appointment. Yeah. But he must, like, what, what do you mean you don't know why he was there? He must have known why he was there. So ridiculous. Right. Sorry, I'm looking up stuff about give, give me two Park. minutes. I'll be... Yeah, give me two minutes, I'll pop straight back. Jamie. Huh? Give me just one minute. Okay. I'll give you a call back. Alright. Hello? Hello? Yo. Hey. Yeah, so should we play a little game? Right, type in in Frinsbury Park, and then off the top of our heads we'll run three terror attacks. So well, I, ar Frinsbury I already see uh, Charlie Hebdo, one of the yeah. attacks. Suspects. What about the Amsterdam trains? Definitely linked. Yeah. That one linked to it? What about um, let me see. Paris? See if Paris was linked to that. Paris terror attack. Are they linked to Frinsbury Park? Al-Qaeda train suspect in terrorist attack. Um, mass vandalized. I don't know. It's not in the Thanks headlines. Right, go on to the next one. We will, we'll leave that one unknown. What about the Brussels airport? Brussels. Frenzy Park are usually the biggie terror attacks normally. Yeah. They don't go small. But your, your own viewers can do actually type in any Islamic attack that comes to the top of your head. Type in Frenzy Park. And then you're going to have to see a massive trend. Yeah, yeah, no, I definitely. It's, it's ridiculous, but um. It seems to be yeah. I also I have links or uh, articles pulled on the West Memphis three if we want to. Yeah, get do you want to do the that. West Memphis three? Yeah, yeah, sure. Well, how much? How far did you get with it? What What's your note? What, what? You start. You give an intro to West Memphis three. Well, I mean, from from what I've gathered, it's, you know, the story of the three kids. I, I didn't realize they've done a handful of movies off of it, which yeah, is yeah. all really odd to me. Because, you know, you it's you don't have, like, you think at this rate, like, if we were going to do movies about these weird things that happen, you'd have movies about school shootings. But, of course, we don't have those, oddly enough, but we have, you know, dramatizations of all these other things. Um... But, you know, is the from the Wikipedia, the West Memphis Three are the three men who were tried and convicted as teenagers in 1994 and the 93 murder of three boys in Arkansas, Damian Eccles, Jesse Miss Kelly, and uh, Jason Baldwin, sentenced to life imprisonment, and then, you know, there was satanic yeah. ritual abuse, and then you had the whole push from celebrities yeah. and everyone else to get them out, and it was done off of DNA uh, evidence and... Well, the main reason for getting them out, sorry to butt in, was because they wore Metallica t-shirts, listened to just metal music, and then they linked back to Satanism. There were no other links. It's just because they were odd and wore Metallica shirts. There's nothing more to it. That's kind of the premises I think Johnny Depp went down in the West Memphis Free film. They, they were just met listening to Metallica, you know, outcasts, so they need the police needed someone to blame. These three kids were found dead. It was this, it, it looked satanic. So they needed three kids to blame. So the police they didn't know who did it. They wanted it solved quickly. So because these kids were like outcasts, they went for them. Yeah. So th this basically happened in 1993. And during 1993, I don't know if you remember, you had something called a satanic panic going on in America at the same time. I don't remember it personally. I mean, I'm aware of it. And I'm aware of, you know, there were big, big kind of booms, it seemed like, in, you know, the satanic ritual abuse, the child trafficking. Yeah, on, and the satanic panic online kind of like to cut for Apple go, oh, you believe in Satanism? No, there's not really doing satanic rituals. I mean, come on. So this is kind of it. Well, and and I, then, I assume that's also probably around the same time you had, you know, Anton LaVey doing rounds on all of the talk shows and every you know right before Mar yeah and michael aquino yep and right before marilyn manson really boomed in the 90s and yes yeah, it's, it's it's i'm sure michael aquino is going to come up a couple of times but let's get back to the west memphis phrase there's three kids were found in memphis 
where on a, on a site which is known for satanic rituals, and they were basically found underwater, it looked like one of them had been raped, and they'd been subject to a, a satanic rituals. So they picked up these three kids, and there's all these films about how Valerians and how they got off. But if you actually have a look at the evidence, they, they say, I'll try to repeat again, I know I repeat myself, the whole emphasis of them being not guilty is the fact that the police just needed someone to blame, so because they wear Metallica t-shirts, they're obviously Satanists, but they're not Satanists. There's no such thing as Satanism, hence the Satanic panic. It's just a panic over nothing. Well, if we look at Damien Eccles, he was in a mental institute. Did you know that? No. Oh, yeah, yeah no, no, I did read that. I yeah, did, so th this is... So, before we do it, so when, the, when these kids got arrested, there was a big court case, and these students went down, because it's such a fascinating case to have a, a satanic murder case, that they went to film it. And as they filmed it, they thought Damien Eccles was actually innocent. And then that became the first West Memphis Free film, as these students turned up to the court case, reviewing it, they were going to be like unbiased and all this stuff and just review an interesting case because it would be an interesting case, right? Yeah. But w this is some stuff they miss out and at the end of the film they go, oh, they're just poor little kids, they listen to Metallica. This is some stuff they don't tell you about Damon Eccles. Was he actually, to start off with, he changed his name to Damien. His real name isn't Damien. That I didn't know. Well, do you want to take just a wild guess? And even he admits as why he changed his name to Damien. Oh, I'm sure it's because he is a devout Christian and loves Jesus Christ. Uh, no, <laughs> it's to do with the Omen film. Do you remember the yeah, Omen yeah, film? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Happy Damien. Dum, dum, dum. Yeah, he changed his name to Damien. And then at some point he ends up in a mental institute where he talked about sacrificing children to... Satan. Where he well, I mean, there's even a thing at his... Uh, attack people and drunk their blood. Yeah, yeah, I have it here on the Wikipedia, actually, the part you're talking about. At his death penalty sentencing, Eccles' psychologist reported that months before the murders, Eccles had claimed he obtained superpowers by drinking human blood. Yeah, and that's from his psychiatrist when he was in the mental home. Yeah. When he used to torture animals as well. When the police raided his house, they found all these skulls mm -hmm. of animals, and he skinned them himself. So I think, I think there's a process to say to I think it probably start with animal sacrifice. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, they do a, a decent job kind of depicting, depicting it. Did you see Rob Zombie's remake of the Halloween movies? No. Where they, well, they had it where they basically showed uh, Michael Myers as a child, and it was. He was killing little animals and everything like that, and it basically goes through a... Uh, Introduction. Yeah, I think that's the beginning of a making of a psycho. You start off with animals. Yeah, yeah. You don't feel any remorse to the animals, so it just progresses. Yeah. His yeah. alibi never stood up. He gave an alibi that he went to some club, uh -huh. but the club wasn't open that night. So his alibi didn't add up. Yeah. Now, this one kid who was called Jesse, he actually confessed to it quite a few times. Mm -hmm. to the cops. His dad actually took him to the police. So his dad obviously thought he did it and made him confess. Damien also failed quite a few lie detector tests. I don't know if that's mentioned on your wiki page. Yeah. How many lie detector tests did he fail? Is it about six, I think? Um, I don't know. I'm looking through it, but... None of this I mean, comes up in the film. Like they ignore all this. And during the court case, here's one thing where it says though during a polygraph examination he denied any involvement. The polygraph examiner claimed that Eccles chart indicated deception. On May 9th, during a formal interview by Detective Ryan Ridge, Eccles mentions that one of the victims had wounds on their genitals. Law enforcement viewed this knowledge as incriminating. Like there's there's tons of stuff where like you're saying it just didn't add up. Yeah, like, these you can't take as gospel, but he also confessed to a lot of people in the local area, like bragging about it, so I don't know how much you can take, you've got to take that with a pinch of salt, obviously. Yeah. Now, the other thing is, is Jesse, he said that he took a bottle of whiskey down there, he drank the whiskey and threw it and it smashed. Uh-huh. Cops found that smashed whiskey bottle. 
There was also blood found on Damien Eccles' necklace. So ridiculous. Like, how you can have all this stuff, and then... Like... Well, it's the fact that they don't... They do three documentaries on this, and they're all two and a half hours each. They miss all of that out. In a six-hour documentary, they miss all those points out. Six hours. Yeah. And they miss out those key bits. Well, you know, it, it makes you wonder, though, who was funding them? Who wanted those, you know, documentaries? Yeah, who was funding it? You know, who, who was funding those films? Do I know? No. I think you do. Uh, well, I assume Johnny Depp was part, yeah, partly behind it. Yeah, they got all these celebrities behind yeah. it. Yeah. Johnny Depp being the main one. Now, here, here's the thing I wonder about, though. Because, I mean, I don't doubt it at all, but... Can we, just before we get into Johnny Depp, I want to explain some other stuff in the court case. Okay. Was that Damon Eccles, you can watch the film, where he's in court, it's actually him. He talks about how great Alistair Crowley is, because he had loads of Alistair Crowley books. His girlfriend was pregnant at the time, and he wrote his name, his child's name, his girlfriend's name, and Alistair Crowley's, and they were doing like all this numerology sort of stuff. Yeah. The and they found that. They found all these Alistair Crowley books. And then he was just going, oh, Alistair Crowley was just a nice poet. And then the jury just brawled it because they didn't know who Alistair Crowley was. So what does Alistair Crowley, I mean, you've read some of his books, what yeah, does it yeah. say about child sacrifice? Yeah, I mean, it says basically they're the most pure because they haven't encountered... The the, yeah, yeah. Well, do you want to explain? Do we need to explain who Alistair Crowley is and what the Leemites are and all this business? Well, I, I mean, I, I hope anyone who's watching this already would yeah, we're gonna skip over that, have so some background info. But, but, but I, it, I would say, though, you know, people look into him as, like, a soul Satanist, but really, if you look into him, he encompassed a lot of, you know, Kabbalah, Buddhism. He, he did travel, and he did do a lot, and that's why it's easy for people to be like, Ignore one part and opt towards the other part, but I mean. Can you, you bring up some pictures of Damon Eccles for one minute? Yeah. What? Just bring up Google Images. Now, what's funny? Well, it's not funny, but when he gets out of jail, the whole premise was, I was just picked on because I listen, I look black and I look dark and I wear Metallica T-shirts. As soon as he gets out, what does he start doing? As soon as he gets out of jail. And what does he look like to you? Does he look like a black magician? Does he dress like... He still carries that image. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he looks... And then he, you know... He goes, he goes on all his talk show hosts. He goes on all his talk show programs. And he does all his interviews about how he, how he got off death row and how he was innocent. And he does all the occult symbols. If you watch... If you type in Damien Eccles this morning, I think it's one of those American morning shows, you can see him doing all the... You might recognize the hand symbols from Freemason, because Freemason have a similar kind of system to what a, like the OTO would use. Yeah. Like an OTO comes from Alistair Crowley. So you'll see similar things that you get initiates and then based on the hand signals, you know. So I don't know if you can have a look. If you type in Damien Eccles' hand signals, you'll probably see him like doing all his hand signals on live TV. Like one where he's got, he does the crossing the arms in that Masonic fashion, and touching his finger with his thumb, yeah. looking like he's meditating, and doing the, the six OK signs all the time on live TV. And then and when he gets out, he gets matching tattoos with Johnny Depp. Yeah. Matching tattoos is quite a commitment. Yeah, yeah. He then goes visits the Process Church. Can you remember the Process Church? No. Wasn't that Charles Manson? Maybe, yeah. Let me... The Process Church. Damien Eccles, and then do Charles Manson. The Process Church of the Final Judgment and the Manson Family. Yeah. Right, well, who did the Mansons kill, that famous murder? Sharon Tate and uh and Sharon Tate was dating who? Oh uh fuck, what's his name? 
the Polanski. Yeah, yeah, Polanski. Who who we he know was a pedophile. Was, yeah, Polanski was tied in with all that stuff. And I mean, even you know, I think and Johnny Depp does films with Polanski, loves Polanski, even though he's a convicted pedophile. He's convicted, yeah. I think, isn't he? Polanski. He's actually convicted of it. And and to tie it all together, you know, it's funny because what was the thing that Charles Manson was rant, ranting and raving about? A war against the pigs, a race war. Yeah. I mean, he was ranting yeah. about things we see surfacing nowadays because he was tied into Hollywood and the insiders and everything like that. I mean, I almost think Charles Manson was like a MK Ultra case gone bad. Like, he was probably under mind control, but also handling a group of people, too. Well, Damien Eccles, as soon as he's got out of prison, he seems to be. He, he openly does occult practicing. Yeah. He writes books about the occult now. So it's picked that he was just picked up because they thought he was Satanist. He's an open Satanist. Yeah. I don't want to go into a debate about, you know, different, like Luciferianism, OTO, Satanism. Yes, there's lots of different boxes for Satanism. I'm just using, like, the key buzzword, okay? Actually, I just found a, a picture here where it's, Alistair Crowley used the thumbs up hand sign to represent the pan horns, the god of Wicca, the devil, and then you have a handful of pictures of Damien Eccles doing that pose. Even on the cover of his book, he is doing the pose where it's you said the arms crossed with the thumbs up. Can you bring up a now can you bring up a picture of Damien Eccles with Johnny Depp, please? Look at those two son of a bitch. Just look at them. They look like G Hollywood Jimmy Savills. I'm sorry. But just look at them. Yeah. With that blue background and the Audi sign behind them. Yeah. Just look at it. It's really, I mean, so he, this guy, Johnny Depp, gets the man. I want to talk about Johnny Depp for a while. Now, if you, it's hard to find, but if you look, he got into Hollywood by dressing up as a girl and basically showing his cock, like, through his dress. Yeah. He used to do those kind of films. And he's really into this... Um, his favorite poet, can you remember who it is, but it's to do with that boy, North American Boy Love Association. Who? Johnny's Depp's parents were friends of Allen Ginsberg. Do you know who Allen Ginsberg is? Sounds familiar. Well, his part of the paedophile organization is called NAMBLA, NAMBLA yeah. North American Man Love Boy Association. Yeah. NAMBLA. So there, Johnny Depp... You know, there's even creepy pictures of... Johnny Depp and Damien Eccles with their wives together in this weird Type blue in background. Johnny Depp kisses Marilyn Manson. There's loads of them kissing. Now, I don't know if you know who took over it. Now, you're talking now about Anton Lefay. Anton Lefay was the head of the Church of Satan, right? Yeah. Who took over to Anton Lefay? Well, it was, uh, wasn't it? The, uh, the other guy who's military service? You, you mentioned him. Well, no, he no, he didn't think to say that was hardcore enough, so he set up the Temple of Set. Oh, oh That's yeah. Michael Aquino. 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 This, yeah. this Church of Satan went to Marilyn Manson, I think. Anton Lafay was replaced by Marilyn Manson. Can, can you find images of Johnny Depp kissing Marilyn yeah, Manson? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So Marilyn Manson, just do a Google chat. Just do a Google search, Marilyn Manson, head of Church of Satan. I'm pretty sure that's right. But, you know, it also, it might have switched, because you know who I've also seen rumors, uh, Church of Satan, here's his, his card um, and stuff. He, I guess he had a membership card. That's nifty. Um, well, the next thing I want to move on to is a subject that we love very well, and the reason why the West Memphis Free is so key is let's cut straight to the chase. Hold on, one thing, Who, one thing I was going to say real quick. I have also heard rumors that the head of the Church of Satan out in Hollywood now is actually Jim Carrey, and that's why Jim Carrey went on a bunch of TV shows kind of mocking the, Illumi mocking the Illuminati and Satanism and stuff like that. I know if he's not running it, he's very high up in it. And the reason this is all, oh, yeah, Marilyn Manson, real name, Brian Warner, is self-confessed Satanist in the first Church of Satan, started by Anton LaFay. I don't know if he still is the head of it, but he was for a while. But anyway, the reason why it gets so interesting is we talked about it last episode, which is one of Johnny Depp's most famous films is this Fear and Loathe in Las Vegas. Yeah. You, which is about who? 
It's Hunter S. Thompson. Right, and Hunter S. Thompson's linked to Boys Town. Do you remember the Boys Town scandal? Yep. Which was, uh, is it Jonathan King? Was the pedophile in America? Yeah. And this story came from Paul Bonacci. If you type in Paul Bonacci into Google, you'll see that he named, he takes the FBI, Ted Gurdonson, to Bohemian Grove before anyone snuck into Bohemian Grove or talked about it. And he was talking about snuff films being made. And he said that there were two people there. One of them's nickname was the Captain. Mm -hmm. And then the other guy was the director, and he was Hunter S. Thompson. And Hunter S. Thompson, he called his house the Owl Retreat, didn't he, or something, after a while? Yeah. He bragged about going to Bohemian Grove. Yeah. So how does this kid, Paul Bonacci, know about uh, Bohemian Grove? How does he take the FBI there? Sorry, I'm, I'm re I have up a bunch of things where, you know, Hunter S. Thompson saying, if I had written all the truth I knew from the past 10 years, about 600 people, including me, would be rotting in prison cells from Rio to Seattle today. Absolute truth is very rare and dangerous commodity in the context of professional journalism. So, I mean, he's obviously even admitting that, you know, there are definitely shady things that he has been present for and involved in and well do you remember nicole brown his secretary when he died she wrote that it, she was forced to watch snuff films and she refused and then mark dice who's that youtube guy he interviewed nicole brown and she confirmed it yeah and then that goes into rusty nelson if you type in rusty nelson hunter s thompson he was a photographer and he is in jail for having paedophile images. And he says that he was paid by Hunter S. Thompson to make a snuff film. If you type in Rusty Nelson, Hunter S. Thompson. And, he, and Rusty Nelson was arrested because of the Boys Town scandal. Yeah. And Johnny Depp, like, he idolizes Hunter S. Thompson. They live together. And, he, and he, they act very similar now. Yeah. They talk the same. I can't. I don't know if you can do an impression of Hunter S. Thompson, but they're very similar. Yeah. And Hunter S. Thompson talks about the adreno gland in the film that he overdoses on the adreno gland that his mate brought from a witch. And if you look into Alistair Crowley, you get the adreno gland by sacrificing a child. And when they're in so much fear, they have adrenaline in their blood. And when you slit the throat, that re releases the adrenaline, the adreno gland. Even, you know, there's a thing where I, there's all these graphics where there's a Johnny Depp thing with him with pictures of Hunter S. Thompson, Marilyn Manson, Anton LaVey, and Damien Eccles. Yeah. And there's even a thing where in a journal or a letter of Damien Eccles it says, Dear Mom and Dad, just remember I am Wiccan and I will be reincarnated. Did you ever watch his film The Ninth Gate? Yeah. Can you tell people about The Ninth Gate? Give me a little raster. Because The Ninth Gate, I think... It says a lot about John, Johnny Depp's philosophy. Yeah, I don't remember what exactly the thing about the book is, but it's him continually searching for this book of satanic, you know, in, information. I don't remember if it's supposed to, like, help you channel the devil or what, what the actual details of it are. But it seems, you know, everywhere he's turning, he's then running into the woman who's either following him. It's very off. Like, you Yeah, know, the woman not... is Lucifer, basically, and he fucks her at the end. It's... And then it comes up with the light. That they, that was the... Yeah, there's three books he's got to find. They've got to match the three books to get the, you know, the spell or whatever. Yeah. I can't remember it too well either. But it seems to be paying homage to Lucifer. Yeah, uh, you know, I just found a thing where I guess there is... Uh, I can't get in because I need an account. But here's the thing that says, Rusty Nelson, Larry King offered me $100,000 to make snuff films yeah. with Hunter S. Thompson. Larry King, of all people? Like, that's insane. And it, But it shows you that up at the top, you know... All of these people that we see on the television, and there are, you know, moral leaders on the news and everything like that, they are the most despicable, disgusting people. Well, do you think Johnny comes across as a bit of a paedophile in a child in a chocolate factory? Yeah, yeah. 
Definitely in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Even Alice in Wonderland. Do you remember when it's on TV and he does that Letterman interview or whatever? Doesn't he say something shady in that? I don't remember. That, yeah, type in, listen to what Johnny Depp says. You can watch that, you put that YouTube video on. I think it's quite a good YouTube video. And listen to what Johnny Depp says. It should come up with a YouTube video. It's 1 minute 16. I wonder yeah, what yeah. that interview. Yeah, click that. I wonder what that interview is. Make sure that's the right one. All right, hold on. I don't know if you'll hear really it or not. Enjoy. I want to know what he says. I, can't I like it because but it's probably going to be it's the real disgusting. Deal. You know? and, 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 have you seen the movie? No, I've not. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, you've not seen the movie? Not just yet. <laughs> and and are you too busy to see it, probably? Uh, you know, I, in a way, you know, once once my job is done on the film, it's really none of my business. <laughs> you know. <laughs> So, so you deliberately don't look at the finished product? Oh yeah, I stay as far away as I possibly. Is that right? Yeah. I, I, if I can, I try to stay in as profound a state of ignorance as possible. Uh -huh. Well, you come to the right place. Yeah. You're exactly where you need to be. You are. That's interesting, and is it, uh, and forgive is me, is Depp's it a little insecurity? On. Yeah. I just, you what know, did he I, say? I don't like, uh, uh, I, I don't like watching myself. Mm. Yeah. I Hold prefer on. the experience. I mean, making the film is great, right? The process is all fine, but then, then he's up there. Right. Well, he basically goes on and says that he doesn't watch any of the movies he's been in. Um, at one point, he refers to the person on the screen as a different person. He says he's up there. And just says, you know, he's fine with filming and everything like that. But as far as the movies themselves, he wants to be as in a as ignorant state as possible. And um, you know, I think there's there's a handful of ways you can interpret what he's saying. <coughs> On one level, I think these people know. If, is he if, creepy to you? Yeah, you yeah, just... he's creepy without a doubt. But you know, if you're dealing with things on a on a level where you're the black magician and you're putting you know energies and and your spells out there you know like i it, it's more it makes more sense to me as a musician in songwriting you know you're writing a spell that's what the lyrics are so why would you want to place yourself under the spell you are putting out for everyone else that i mean that's i think the same mindset as him with not watching it he knows that there's messages being directed at the viewers so he'd rather just be the creator and be above it rather than be the viewer and be victim to the magic of Hollywood, basically. And, and what, just remind people what you were talking about Hollywood being last week, about, you know, the, where the name Hollywood actually comes from. And well, it comes from the type of wood that witches would make their wands out of. To cast stuff. spells. It's, it's all, you know, the term Hollywood magic, even. It's, it, it's a very figurative and literal meaning and that's how most of this goes over people's heads because it's so literal people just can't believe you need to be initiated that literal yeah yeah well you need to be on gate or just understand what the occult really is there is around now he's got matching tattoos with uh eccles damien eccles type in johnny that matching tattoos of marilyn manson they've got matching tattoos and all I think they have. Does that come up? Yeah. Uh, let's see. What are they? Something on their wrist. Yeah, we'll just do Johnny Depp Illuminati and put that into Google and look at all the hand signals he does. Like everyone is covering an eye or he's got a skull ring on or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, all the time. The one with the monocle over the eye, and even the movies he picks, you know, transcend. Yeah, I want to. Can you go through some of his movies? Just go through his uh, biography of movies. They're all going to be satanic. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can see them from here. It's like, because a few pictures of them popped up, but you have like Transcendence, From Hell. Out. Well, transcendence is key, because you, know, you talk about that all the time, which leads us to artificial intelligence. Yeah. Which you've been talking about a lot recently. Yeah. 
Uh, all right, let's see. We have night. Well, he starts, but what, what his he starts on Nightmare on Elm Street, which is a classic. But yeah, and then you know Edward Scissorhands, Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare, Sweeney Todd. Yep. What's eating Gilbert Grape? Dead Man, Donnie Brasco, Fear and Loathing. Oh, before I forget, he's actually done two films about Hunter S. Thompson. He's done the Red Rung Diaries, and that's how he met his current wife, I think. Yeah. The so the Red Rum Diaries, I haven't seen it, but I heard it. It's about Johnny. It's about Hunter S. Thompson's ultra ego. Sleeping Hollow, The Ninth Gate. There's a re there's a really good scene though in the now, the Rum Diaries where um the one guy he's in business with basically explains to them how big corporations own all the newspapers. And I was actually watching a thing last night where Mike Cernovich said on Stefan Molyneux's show that we really should refer to some of these newspapers that have these, like, billionaires running them as, like, like, what's the one, New York Times? Start calling it Carlos Slim's blog, because it's owned by Carlos Slim, so it's going to put out whatever he wants, but I just wanted to throw that out there. I thought that was an interesting point, and it's a point in the movie. But I could be talking shit here. <laughs> Pirates of the Caribbean, the reason why it's so, it comes from Disney, I don't know if you've, if you've been to it, yeah. it's actually a really great ride, it's fucking epic, but uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, is that not where Skull and Bones get their logo from? Yeah. Because Pirates, wouldn't Pirates be where banking started? Yep. Is that right, is that where banking starts with Pirates of the Caribbean, they need to put their loot somewhere? Yeah, yeah. So they came up with banks. And then that's why Skull and Bones use it. It's not just because they're grave robbers. I don't know if that's true or not. But it could be. You you also you have, have that one out. the movie Blow, From Hell, Once Upon a Time in Mexico, Finding Neverland, Charlie and the Chocolate, Corpse Bride. There's another, you know, yeah. Tim Burton movie. Um He's done a lot of work with Tim Burton, Sweeney Top, The Imaginarium of Dr. Parnassus, Alice in Wonderland, Rome Diaries. He did a movie with Paul McCartney. He's in a band called, is this band called Hollywood Pipers or something? I don't know. Um, and then you got all sorts of What's the thing he's, he owns? What nightclub is it that he owns where River Phoenix died? Uh, let's see. Owns. He defied the rooms. Johnny Depp's 1930 Fairy Castle. On uh, It's a short walk from the Viper Club that Johnny Depp used to own. He used to own the Viper Room. Do you think we're being harsh calling Johnny Depp sketchy? No, I mean he's he's without a doubt sketchy. And it's so, so Roman it's so funny though because you know he's so high, highly regarded and lifted above everyone in that industry. Where um I I didn't even realize he's 53 already. I guess that makes sense. But you know like he was a they wanted him as like a big time kind of sex symbol. Like he We're typing Johnny Wood into the Woods pedophile where he had a lot of complaints where he came across as quite he he does like a pedophile scene in it. Into the Woods, Johnny Depp sings Hello Little Girl. Only mildly creepy. Let's see. Into the Woods, how Disney tiptoed around Johnny Depp's creepy sexualized song. Ain't that a kid? Yeah, there's an article about it. Of, uh... Yeah, it's. Well, you know, Disney was a pedophile. There's plenty of evidence to support that, so... Disney gets a lot of reference. Did you watch the new James Bond film, Spectre? No, I didn't, I didn't watch all of it. 
Well, you, in a nutshell, you know it's about a secret society, right? Yeah, that yeah. Declared. Well, to get into a secret society, his, James Bond has to give a nickname to get past security. Uh-huh. It's Mickey Mouse. And then James Bond, tr he tracks down the enemy, like later on in the film, because he's in a hotel room, and a mouse goes into a mouse hole, and he thinks, oh, fuck, that means there's something behind the wall. Yeah. And he knocks it down, and there's like a secret operation going behind there, and that's how he tracks down the enemy. So in a way, that represents the mouse going behind the scenes, that there's like a hidden hand behind yeah. it. Spectre films are great, very... It's got a lot of Philema references in there, and going back to Disney as well. But that's it. That's pretty much my Johnny Depp rant. But I was hoping that you could continue it, because his big film's Transhumanization, and what you're talking about, about keystrokes and is artificial intelligence like a real thing? Because that seems to be linked to... Um, transhumanization seems to have a huge link to Satanism. Thing. Well, you know, about that being there. you know what a, a crazy thing I actually even saw on the news this morning, and it, it ties into it sort of indirectly. Well, not the news; I saw it on YouTube. But and there's articles about it in the news with the Olympics. There's a lot of talk about genetically modified humans competing. Like people are saying, like you know, there's all these articles, and it's so weird because it, it reminds me of like. Nazi eugenics sort of getting a, a revival, but there's talks of, you know, Michael Phelps, the big American swimmer. I guess his body proportions are off. Like, his legs are really short, and his upper body is really big, but it physically makes him a better swimmer. And there's just all sorts of, you know, stuff going on where they're activating, like, they think some of the Chinese competitors they're doing genetic therapies on them because it's not illegal. Steroids and, you know, juice and all that, that's illegal. Those are, you know, the supplements and the enhancements and everything like that. They have rules about that. But as far as genetic treatments to activate a genome to make you faster or stronger, they don't have rules about that. So with the, uh, the Olympics going on, lots of weird stuff being packaged into that as far as transgenders competing and the idea of genetically modified humans it's being quite normalized as well like if you yeah i know it's quite a lot of news stories about chimeras yeah and they just admit it open like before when alex jones talked about that they're like oh, you think there are chimeras yeah yeah world? well now Mads. it's like 10 years into spider goats and glow-in-the-dark cats and stuff and to think they haven't been doing that stuff on humans all along all the time, I oh, mean. Oh, God. That's what The X-Files is about. Yeah. Did you watch The X-Files? The remake or the original? Yeah, the remake. Yeah, the remake I watched. I haven't seen a lot of the original. Um, what if you swapped the remake? What if you swapped the aliens with biological cancer weapons? Well, I mean, yeah. You you easily could. I think the the whole... Just, yeah. The whole angle I mean. on the... On the uh, thing though it's really interesting how it's kind of took this turn where it's like it's not aliens it's the government and they're using aliens as a beard for you know what they're actually doing see that's where the 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 psyops and the hoaxes that's where i think they really exist you know there's a return of the idea of well do you remember the x-files did that pilot show as well the lone gunman or whatever where they they're meant to fly into the twin towers and it's all a yeah job yeah one one thing I was going to say is, you know, it's interesting with the uh, the election that's going on now. You have them talking again about who brought up the Obama birther scandal. And it was the Clintons who originally bring it up. And people are trying to use it as this sort of damning Hillary, even though Trump was pushing it by saying, oh, well, Trump just got it from Hillary. If you have an issue with his birth issue being questioned, blame it on Hillary. But people don't realize that Hillary threw that out there as a psyop. Everyone was supposed to be looking at Kenya and being like, oh, he was born in Kenya or, you know, this place or that place and not look at the Frank Marshall Davis thing. They're looking yeah. at it from the wrong angle where it's like, it wasn't Hillary saying that to go after Obama. Hillary was sending you down a rabbit hole that was going to end up with nothing. Bush even helped it along too because he said, we sent people to Kenya, but the records appear to be tampered. There were no records. He wasn't born in Kenya. Even his fa his Kenyan family wants a DNA test at this point. 
Aren't people dropping dead over the DNC email link? People are dropping dead all over. I've been seeing things about lots of alternative health doctors dropping dead. I've been seeing, you know, the Democratic Even Party Julian is Assange brought it up. purging itself. Yeah. Yeah, well, Julian Assange basically referenced that the dead DNC staffers where they got their info from. I also saw yesterday Guccifer did another leak where he published all the DNC's cell phones and uh, email addresses. He basically doxed everyone in the DNC. And that's I think things are going to ramp up, aren't they? Because when is, well, how long have you got now? Do they do it in, when do they do the election? December or something? Uh, I think it's November. I wish it was <sighs> soon. Yeah, we got two more months of this. And it's only gonna get it's only gonna get uglier because here's the thing. It's gonna get crazy. They don't they're not gonna let Trump in. They're no, they're not. And I I'll tell you with Hillary's health issues at this point, since that's all been revealed, I can't see them letting her in, but we have a history of just picking these people and propping them up, you know. We've had presidents where they just shoot them up with speed and adrenaline, send them out there to do a speech for 20 seconds, and then they give them Xanax and let them collapse in a wheelchair. It's not well, unheard Hillary's of health, for us to if just... Hillary does have these health problems, who, does that mean John McCain will pick up from her? Huh? Well, maybe they'll let Hillary get so far and say, right, she is fucking retarded, she can't be president, and then chuck John McCain up. Or you mean Joe, uh, Biden, it would probably be. John, yeah, maybe Biden. John yeah. McCain's a Republican. It would be Biden. Biden is the one. Oh, I, is it? I thought they were going to bring Biden up in the first place because, yeah, so because did I. Oba yeah, Obama, so, yeah. when he did his last State of the Union, he was saying all sorts of crazy shit. Like, John Biden would be the one to cure cancer and this, this, and that. Like, it sounded like he was getting ready to endorse him for president. I love that Hillary Clinton gif where the balloons drop and that ghost goes past her head. Oh, I know. I mean, I, I like the one where she's being questioned by the reporters and starts having a seizure. I can't wait for these debates. And I'll tell you what, I do. Donald Trump has a point when he's like, these things were scheduled on the same night as the NFL. Because you know what they're going to do is everyone's going to watch the game and then they're just going to see clips of it on the news afterwards with the news adding well, their spin. Well, when he did his rally, did you see they cut him off? He goes... Yeah, let me tell you something. Hillary, she deserves a certificate from ISIS for being the founder and the creator. <laughs> yup. And you know, the crazy thing is, is the only countries, you know, people want to say, oh, Donald Trump is such a racist, this, this, and that, he's going to send blacks back to Africa. The only place that showed that full speech was the African news stations, because they're the ones that are being attacked by ISIS. And That's been a big talking point in the UK papers. What, Donald Trump's crazy because he claims that Obama funded trained ISIS. And now it's now it's come out though. I'll tell you what. No, they say it hasn't. They're like, no, how could that possibly yeah, be well, true? All the British people are buying it going, as if Obama would fund training. Yeah, I mean. Give weapons to ISIS. But we did. There was a whole campaign, you know, where. Yeah, Ron Paul confirmed it, was it? Five million, five million tons and five billion dollars or whatever. Yeah. The speech he did. Most people, need, most people don't buy that, though. They don't believe it. Like, it's all over the UK press. Oh, Donald's stupid. He thinks that Obama is allies with ISIS. Well, I mean... Like so Seymour Hersh thinks that. So, uh, I, well, uh, have you seen... There was a good clip Infowars put together about Putin's speeches. Yeah, yeah. Putin's That's what I've been speeches. posting on Facebook. Yeah. Anyone that comments on it, they get, an info, they get that video. Did you see Putin's speech about all the... Yeah, they get that one as well. Oh, my you God. You read my mind. We are so alike. Yeah, I'll tell you... Check out my Facebook. That's every reply I sent him. Putin looks really good right now as far as the stuff he's saying and... Yeah, well, yeah. Everything as far as just being like, you know, we're... we're well, he's not we the aggressor, is he? No, he's thing. not. And the thing is, he actually looks quite hardcore. Like, he drives F1 cars, he does judo, he does all plays ice hockey... Yeah. Well, Obama does his little girly weights. Yep. It's so funny. I mean, it's just, it's, it's, it's awful, but it's funny on one hand. That's how awful it is. You just got to laugh at it. But I mean, if Hillary gets into office, God help us. They're not going to let Trump in, but I don't know how. I, I just, I think the debates are going to be crazy. Because I, I think 
I think everything's just going to get ramped up. They're going to ramp up the terror attacks in Europe. They're going to ramp up all I'll tell you what. I think you you are probably 100% right. They're going to have some attack on one of those debates or such a big riot that they can't have it because they can't have it because she will not... Well, yeah, because otherwise they've got to cover... All the shit that America's involved in us. I know it's not Americans or whatever, but you're involved. It's the same with the UK. We're involved the political in Syria, powers. Yeah. Libya. We're in, we're in Syria, we're in Libya, we're mucking around in Somalia. Well, like we're your article. In Ukraine. Your article about the. We're fucking all over the shop. If Trump gets in, they've got to finish Syria, they've got to finish Libya, they've got to finish Iraq before the end of November. Or they ramp it up so far that they have to somehow stop, either kill Trump or stop the election happening. Yeah, well, I'll tell you, I think what they're going to do is that you're going to see riots like you saw in Milwaukee, like the streets on fire, before the debates, because I don't think Hillary can handle Trump. Because Trump it's is... It's going to be Brexit on steroids. Yeah, Trump is going to... I mean, if people thought the remarks that, uh, uh, what's his name from UKIP was saying, you know, oh, you guys laughed at me ten years ago, you're not laughing yeah. now. It's, yeah, it's going to be like... It's going to be you like... You guys have never had a real job. It's going to be like that on steroids. Like, Donald I Trump is going to... I love that Crowder film he does with that. He's going to rip into it all and just be like, so what's good with your health, Hillary? What about ISIS? Have you gotten are you getting their support lately? I saw you had the shooter's father behind you. What's going? I mean, he's from New York. He's just going to be like bam, 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 bam. And let me tell you something, Mary. She's going to. I don't know what's going on in Belgium. She's going to start needs having to be a, a beautiful place. She's going to start convulsing on stage if he starts going into her. Or she might just go nuts and have someone shoot him right there. And be like, make this stop. And like, call out an assassin in front of the world. I just, I can't imagine it. If she... Are you all in for Trump then? Uh, you know, it's, it's a weird, weird situation where... I am, mate. I, I think we need him. We need him elected. I don't think... He... The thing is, is here, here's the issue. Everyone dislikes him personally, and I can yeah. understand them disliking him personally, but I agree with all of his policies, and I'm electing someone based on policy, not their personality. Like, But as far as you know, him getting along with Putin, that's a big one for me. That is a... He gets on with Alex Jones. Yeah. Well, he knows what's going on, and he does this great tactic where he'll kind of reference things and then let the media dig themselves in a hole by yep. trying to, you know... He say, is a master at that. He is playing them, and they are calling him stupid the whole way along and not seeing they're digging their own grave. Like, when he just came out and was, like, you know, having everyone, oh, what did he mean by Second Amendment people? Maybe there's something you can do. Everyone knows what he means. He wasn't talking about assassinating anyone. He basically said... Well, the Second Amendment's the Second Amendment, and we know why it's the Second Amendment. Like, it's... I think Hillary Clinton threatened Obama in a debate. Yeah. Pretty sure she did. Well, and you even had Joe Biden, Obama's vice president, come out and say, if he tries to take guns, I have two Berettas for him. Like, basically saying, if he tries to take the guns, I'll shoot at him. Drudge Redlink is whites... Watch whites hunted for beatdowns during Milwaukee race riots. But remember, they can't be racist. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's your white privilege that's caused this. Yeah, I know. Uh, did you see my, my mention on the one video how I think we need to start uh, hashtag white boy magic? No. Yeah, I think... Well, because you know what the thing is? is it's, I, and I had a conversation with someone... You see all these hashtags like hashtag black women did that, hashtag black girl magic. And I mean, black girls are killing it at the Olympics, but you have all of these hashtags black this, black that, where it's almost like, it, okay, this isn't Team America, it's Team Black America. Like it's, it's a breakaway group or something. And it's very. Popular. I think that's what they're going to do because you're seeing that if you have mm. the refugee team or whatever, that eventually you're not going to be able to have an English football team. You're, not you're going to have, have these tribal, team. tribal yeah. racial teams. Yeah. Yeah, they're going to like call it like dinosaurs versus rhinos or something. Yeah, I could see that. I'm not shitting you. I think the days of half the nations football teams will be gone. Yeah, and they'll just eliminate it all. Well. You know, there was even a, another 
<clears throat> thing I had mentioned in the same video where it's, you know, you have it even within the local school systems, the coach of the district I'm in, he got fired and he had a perfect winning record and all the other teams hated it because you had a team of black kids demolishing all these little schools of white guys because blacks are obviously better at sports. But, you know, it's, it's that mindset of, you know, participation, trophies, everyone's equal, there's no winners or losers. Like, eventually, you're right, you're just going to have one mascot versus another mascot, and they're not even going to keep score because we don't want someone to be a loser. It's, go it's going to end up at a very warped, warped point. But... I was saying, you know, the, the black girl magic thing, it's so passive-aggressive, where it's like, okay, this girl did something amazing. Why do I care that she has a coffee-colored vagina, though? Like, is that a factor in her gymnastics ability? No. It looks like, um, yeah. No, I like to say, I'm really worried that things everywhere is just going to get ramped up, especially in Europe. And you're going to see the same just Black Lives Matter. You're going to see just a yeah. massive, absolute ramping up. You know what I'm worried about? I saw a video from Lauren Southern where she talks to a German guy, and he's talking about the one euro an hour jobs for the migrants. Yeah. I mean, that's slavery. You are getting government rations and working for a euro an hour. That's insane. But I have a feeling... Yeah, I won't be able to get a job. I have a feeling... How am I supposed to compete with that? Yeah, you can't. You can't. Because they're giving them even, like, factory jobs and the stuff that would be decent middle, you know, middle-class work. Uh, like, blue-collar middle-class work. And, I mean, the moment that comes to America, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. And so, get me out of Europe. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't even... South America, I guess, is safe. I hear a lot of people relocate down there and do all right for themselves. But this it's going to all fall apart and burn down. It's not even going to fall apart. It's going to explode at this rate in a fiery blaze. And I, well, mean, I can't find much on it, but we had um, that thing in was it Switzerland, the train passengers, that guy set fire to himself. Really? I didn't hear about yeah, that. Yeah, he stabbed about five passengers. One of them was a six-year-old. But the Swiss, I think what's going on in Europe is a lot of people have shut their borders now, so the refugees are having to go through Switzerland now. That's why I thought it was a bit weird that happened in Switzerland. But they're not giving you any description or any motive. Yeah. It just says, man attacks Swiss train passengers with fire and knife. Six injured. I mean, what are you supposed to make of that story? What... Well, and you know, the crazy thing is I saw a article this morning, or a day ago maybe, where in New York there was like an imam shot. An imam, yeah. Yeah, and it's like, you know, I feel bad on one hand, but when I why see... Don't, I would have missed him say, why don't you call white people terrorists then? Well, yeah, it's like, well, it's a Hispanic, and it looks like it might have been a robbery, I guess. Yeah, and it's so funny, though, that you see this sort of attitude from people where it's like, okay, now it happened once to you guys, and you're like, oh, my God, the persecution we face. And it's yeah. like, what are you? Are we keeping tallies here? Because, I mean, you guys well, are... Yeah, they say if it's every a white other, man, every other week... It's a lone gunman. If it's a Muslim, it's a terrorist. yeah. It's so oversimplified, but... It's like, no, a terrorist has a political motive. This, I don't know what happened. It could have been a robbery day. Probably was in New York. I doubt it was someone, you know, pinpointing someone and just picking them out and being like, oh, I dislike him because of his religion. Like I said, hate crimes towards Muslims are 2% of all hate crimes in this country. They're very low. But it's it's so amazing. I just, I can't wrap my head around some of it. You know what I thought was pretty interesting? I don't know if you saw, um, I had a little Twitter conversation with Talib Kweli, who's a Brooklyn-based New York rapper. He was pretty big a couple years ago. But, um... Me and someone else both approached him and were like, hey, has it ever crossed your mind that Black Lives Matter is a COINTEL group? Like, you know, they've 
they're coordinating with the government to cancel the election. They're meeting at the White House. Like, this isn't an organic movement. It's being controlled by the government. And he, his response was, I was at the White House last week. Does that make me COINTELPRO? And my comment back was, Yes. It depends what the context of your visit was. Now, he liked that tweet, but never responded to it, which I thought was very telling because it was basically me insinuating that, yeah, yeah, you might be. But this is also someone who's, like, making headlines for attacking Breitbart rec reporters, calling them coons and everything like that. If, if, if America is a white supremacy and Washington is the capital of the white supremacy, does that not make Talib Kweli the coon for going to the White House and sucking up to them and doing whatever he's doing there? Like, it really pisses me off when... I thought that was built by slaves, the White House. Yeah, a, a, a couple of them, and freed blacks, and Scottish I don't know masons, it was. and it was built by a whole bunch of people. And slaves were included, yeah, but so were freed slaves. Worked on it <laughs> willingly, and everyone else. the The idea that people have of slavery is so off. It's so off, and I really I want to know where this idea of the white supremacy originates from. Like, that's going to be my new quest. Where was this phrase first used? By who? In what context? I know why. Why? I think I do. Because, the, because here's the thing about it, you know... Because, I know it, it sounds like bad, but I think it's because white culture is really great. It's such a great place that they recognize wrongdoings in history, and they want to correct it. But no other race is really doing that. Maybe Asians might. But if he went to the Arab world and asked for reparations, it's not going to happen. Yeah. Well, the thing I wonder is if it's... I think maybe white people are just becoming such a walkover now. They're, they're just so scared of being called racist now. It's just political correctness is what's causing the attacks in Europe. Yeah. No one dares speak about Islam because they don't want to be labeled a racist. Well, I, I wonder more along the lines of if it's a conflated term. Like, there's a guy, Dick Gregory, who is a, you know, black activist yeah, and everything. Yeah. He was a comedian. He ran for president. But he's very tied in with the FBI and every. he knows what's going on. He has good connections. But he'll be in a room full of black people and he'll be talking about white supremacy and then he'll stop and he'll be like, you guys need to realize... I'm talking about white people that you have never met. You will never met, meet a white person part of the white supremacy because they don't interact with you. You are below them. And he's talking about the British monarchy, the Rockefellers, the Rothschilds, the Saudi princes. I mean, people that aren't even white because he's talking about the term white-collar crime. He's not talking about white, the skin pigmentation. And I think people get that confused, where they're like, you know, there's this idea of the white supremacy he's talking about is the idea of you can do no evil. You're always in the white. You could kill someone and it'll be fine and dandy, no looking into it, whatever. White collar crime, basically. But people conflate that with, oh, well, white supremacy, white people must be supreme. Like, I was going to do a video and go through it all and be like, only in a white supremacy could Indians and Asians be doing better than white people. Well, they're not doing very well. They've got a black president. It, that's what I'm saying, though. I mean, in England's white supremacy, you had almost 2,000 girls get raped and the cops didn't look into it because they didn't want to be called racist in the land that they are supreme in. Like, it, it makes no sense. It's well, what are the statistics? How many racial attacks is white against black, and then how many racial attacks black against white? It very Can you look that up? Well, I know the, the one I know offhand is the rape stats, and it's basically there are about eight black women a year who get raped by white guys, and there are about 2,000 white girls oh who get God. raped by black. I mean, it's, yeah, it's so disproportionate that there is no rationale. When I look at numbers like this, I do what I call the the 50 50 trick where i'll say okay the numbers that are positive let's double them for you so let's say instead of eight you know black women raped at 16 and now let's say all right the numbers of white women raped let's cut that in half by 50 so now it's down to a thousand you still have a lot of explaining to do i just gave you a big benefit of the doubt doubled my numbers cut yours in half and it's still 16 to a thousand now what the fuck
It just, it doesn't make any sense. And for people to talk about white people like they do, oh, they're barbaric cavemen, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, look at the rape stats and try saying that because it paints a very different picture. Yeah, it's going to kick off. Well, I mean, I'll tell you what, it's, it's only going to multiply with the immigrant crisis if it comes to America. It is in America, though, isn't it? Or is it not? Alex Jones says it is. I mean, they, people have been coming in because the borders are open, but I, I don't think we've had floods like you guys have had yet. We might have. I don't know. I think it's like more of a slow moving process. So what's your prediction for November? How do you see it plan out? I, I see what? Milwaukee in every major yeah. city. Being a trend. Yep. That's going to be the trend. Especially if there's no, there has to be, you know, I, do, I don't want to say this because it sounds really bad to me. But you need the tanks rolling through those streets. Like it's not going to happen, mate. They've already called violence. They killed a cop on 7-7 seven seven and had to call RoboCop and to deal yeah. with it. And now RoboCop's been passed. I mean, but that's, I mean, that's what you're going that to have. If that doesn't bring military on the street, I don't know. You're, well, they, called, they, you, they marched down the street saying oink, oink, bang, bang, or whatever. Fill their halls with dead cops. I mean, you're, you're gonna, I, th I think you're going to see, like you said, RoboCop, you're going to see them start rolling out more computerized crowd control methods. You're going to see drones going out, because no cop is going to be willing to go into that. Well, are they just letting these, these thugs do, like, probe and attack, see what the reaction is? Huh? And then, well, it's kind of like you do all these probe and attacks, all these probe and little riots. You let them do it. Because you're seeing it, they always let Black Lives Matter destroy the place and riot, and they give them spaces to do it or whatever. Yeah. So I wonder if they're like probing attacks to see what the reaction's going to be. Well, I think they're hoping. And then when you see that there is no real reaction, there is no real throwback, it's just going to encourage more it's people gonna to It's going to get bigger, yeah. There. Well, you know, it's almost Bill Ayers, when he, he wrote a book about, you know, revolution and overthrowing countries, and one of the concepts he mentioned was the idea of a prairie fire, like a little fire that turns into a big blaze and eventually engulfs everything. And that's what I think they're hoping for. They're hoping these one-city riots will be the spark to set the prairie fire and the whole house will start burning down. Because you're right, people are going to see... Oh shit, that person was able to run in the store and get extensions because, you know, some guy in the community got shot? That shit happens. I mean... Well, it almost turns it into that film Purge that you can kind of like yeah. do under these circumstances. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like... If you shout Black Lives Matter, you can just commit crime. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's what you see in London now. That's basically what's in London. You shout Black Lives Matter, you can like smash up McDonald's and resist the rest. It's a good excuse to resist the rest. Yeah, like I said, I, I saw pictures from Milwaukee with, um, with, uh, like, people wearing face masks and holding guns right out of the purge. It looks like it would have been a poster for the movie. Yeah, but why is it coming to London? Uh, that I don't know. Right, how many people, how many blacks die in police custody in the UK? How many do you think it is? Huh? How many police, how many blacks do you think police kill a year that black? In, in America or in London? In London, I think it's like some, some tiny number I saw. It's, I think it's under 10. That's what I'm thinking, yeah. It's not as if we have a problem with blacks being killed by racist cops over here. I don't know how you can make that case. Yeah. But then they have to use that excuse, don't they? They'll say, well, we're standing in solidarity with our brothers. Yeah, I mean, or the... If anything, they should be praising the UK police. <coughs> they should be going up and thanking them, going, oh, look how bad it is in the US. Thank you well, for not being Well, the so other brutal. thing is, these people are now masters at sort of deflection and blaming things on irrelevant things. Like I said, I in a, one video, I had a conversation where people were talking about cops pulling over black people for 
you know, uh, their air fresheners and it's obstructing their view. And I said, you know, this is unconstitutional. We should fight it from the Constitution. You can't have illegal handguns with the Second Amendment and all this other stuff. And someone's response was, the people who wrote the Constitution owned slaves. They don't care about anyone. And now, slavery and the personal lives of the people who wrote the laws have nothing to do with how the laws are executed in court. But you see how their mindset immediately goes to race. This person has a problem with race. Therefore, no. Like, they're... they're stuck in a very, I can't get very the number. narrow-minded... Uh, since 1990, there have been 500 deaths in police custody from ethnic minorities as a whole. Since 1990, 500. See, what, you're looking at about 10 a year? Yeah, something like that. Sorry, I'm going through my Twitter stuff. I might as well throw this out there. I just uh, got confirmation for Bryce Weiner for an interview. He's uh, starting a new music-based uh, type network where people can get paid through blockchain and Bitcoin and things like that. He's in the music industry, so hopefully that will be a really good interview. So just figured I'd let everyone know. I got, I got a lot of good stuff lined up doing this. But, yeah, uh, I don't know. The world's going to burn by November. Speaking of burning, though, I should probably end this call. I do have food in the oven, and I don't want it to yeah. burn. So, but... I've got, I've got some bad news to tell you as well. What is that? So I'll let you finish. I'll let, I'll let you finish first, and then I'll tell you the bad news. Well, I'm, I'm pretty much done, so you can go ahead. You know, you're going to have to redo the last video because my name doesn't disappear. Oh, yeah, yeah, during the it talk. I know, I'm looking at that yeah. now. Um, <clears throat> and it's shit as well. I would just lose it. You sound like a bunch of mentalists. Huh? I would just lose it altogether. I don't think it was that good. Okay. That one. Well, I mean, I, you, then, uh, I'll try to download video. it, see if I can clean up the audio in one of the programs. It would be the same program I would use to take the name out of it. I have to do it in this one anyway. Yeah, I don't know what Google is, but I'm, it, it still shows up as me. Yeah. Well, it's because yeah. we're on Facebook, so yeah, it shows the names. But yeah, I'll take care of that before I upload this yeah, one. Yeah, people again. I did good your name the other day. Lovely. <laughs> oh, really? The video still comes up in the tags with yeah. your name. Okay. Yeah. It yeah. Does. When I, take, I don't know why. When I when I take the whole thing down and redo it, hopefully that'll fix it. So yeah, I'll try to make sure. You might want to cut this one up into three. I would do I do one for like the current affairs, one for just the West Men for free. Yeah, I didn't do that. Also, while we're engine. still going, we should recommend everyone check out our profiles on Steemit. That's S-T-E-E-M-I-T. -E it's a blockchain blogging social network site we're both on and both have articles on. Steam speed away to go. Yeah, I think, I think, I think it's going to be. A lot, obviously. We're, I think we're going to start today. seeing more more alternate social networks picking up and stuff. I hope so. Yeah, the idea is really good. Yeah. But it's, it's a bit weird because you feel a bit weird that uh, you upload videos from you. You upload your video to YouTube, then you put it on Steam. It. That's the bit I don't get. Yeah. It'd be better if you could just upload it straight to Steam it in the first place. I've heard from other. Uh, YouTubers and stuff though that there's going to be a blockchain based video one you can upload on coming soon. There's going to be like a big announce from a handful of people so we'll see. Maybe they're doing updates. I know Steam is still in beta mode so. Yeah but Google is fucking bad man like trying to be anonymous on there because I made another comment on Facebook where I logged into a web page, someone's web page, it said like leave a comment. Yeah. So I thought it would be like a Facebook comment so I can't delete the comment, and it's on the web page. So I even went as far as finding a guy that owned the web page, emailed him, and said, oh, can you delete this web page for me, please, because I made a comment on there. And he's like, yeah, no problem. Because he, like, he understood how annoying it was. He's like, I've deleted it. It's still there. Yeah, that's sucks. So, like, on Google, you cannot, they do not want you being anonymous. No, not at all. But yeah. All right. Well, so that's a warning to everyone listening. Like, Google ain't safe, mate. No, not at all. You can't delete anything on there. They practically are the CIA, as far as I see it. 
Yeah. But anyway, let me get running. I will uh, yeah, man. talk to you later. Yeah. All right. All right. We'll take it easy, man. Take care. You too. Take care. All right. Bye.